But if you really want to know what is at risk from the anti-evolution movement, look at Kansas. And the reason for that is when the anti-evolution movement got control of the State Board of Education, what did they do? They rewrote the definition of science itself. Not just biology, not just evolution, science. All of a sudden, they're getting the chemists upset. They're getting the physicists upset. They're even getting the geologists, who paid no attention to anybody, upset <laughs> on this issue. Now, what do I mean by rewriting the definition of science? This was the definition of science in the Candace School Standards. Science is the human activity of seeking natural explanations for what we observe in the world around us. It seems to me like a straightforward, common sense, easy to understand definition of science. Did the new board like that? Uh-uh. They deleted that. And they decided, we want to put this up. Science is a method of systematic, uh, continuing investigation, uses all this good stuff, to lead to more adequate explanations of natural phenomena. That doesn't sound too bad. But wait a minute, what do they mean by more adequate as opposed to natural explanations? Remember the standards once said, we seek natural explanations from science, and they now say we want more adequate explanations. Well, the board majority explained this to everybody, and they said, here's, the, here's what we want to do. We want to get rid of the concept of methodological naturalism that is used in physics and chemistry. Um, and basically, we think that what naturalism does is it limits inquiry and permissible explanations and promotes the philosophy of naturalism. In short, we want to open science up to non-naturalistic explanations. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. What is a non-naturalistic explanation? I can't think of anything except the supernatural explanation. Supernatural explanations may be correct. Remember, I live in New England. A lot of people who looked at the baseball playoffs in 2004 could, could see the hand of God in the success of the Red Sox. And you know what? I, I think that might be true. I think God might have had his fill of George Steinbrenner that year, um, and that was it. But that explanation, even if correct, is not science because it's not testable. And that's the point that is made. And the notion of promoting non-naturalistic explanations is exactly what's happened in Kansas. Now, you might say, but, you know, come on, shouldn't you teach both sides? Well, sure you should. But you have to realize that with many scientific ideas, when you talk about teaching both sides, what are we talking about when we talk about both sides of chemistry, neurobiology, physics, or astronomy? When you look at the other side, you might be disturbed as to what the other side is. It could be alchemy, phrenology, outright magic, or astrology. Now, this is... I think most of you will agree, even if you don't like what I'm saying right now, most of you will agree, that's a pretty funny cartoon, but it's, you know, it's an editorial, I mean, come on. This is an editorial cartoonist, he's taking license with the facts. Nobody really wants these things in the science classroom. And you know what? Until the Dover trial, I would have thought that too. But a funny thing happened at the Dover trial. Pay attention to this one down here, um, and that is... Where would intelligent design take the science classrooms? Michael Behe was placed on the stand under oath in the Dover trial. Michael is a professor of biochemistry at Lehigh University. He's probably the country's leading advocate of what he calls the biochemical challenge to evolution. He is very much in favor of intelligent design. He's a member of the Discovery Institute. He's been here in Ohio. On cross-examination, Dr. Behe admitted that his definition of theory was so broad it would also include astrology. Um, and here's another thing from the same article. Um, he also pointed out, the lawyer pointed out, that astrology would come under this definition. B, he agreed with that, and the exchange prompted laughter from the court. Now, I wasn't in the courtroom that day, but I'm sure it was pretty funny to see an advocate for intelligent design say, yes, if you stretch the definition of science to include intelligent design, you know what else fits in that strike zone? Astrology. And I would add, so does mysticism, pyramid power, New Age spiritualism, and Wiccan teaching or witchcraft. Now, I'm sure this is all really fine stuff, but one of the things that it's not is science, and that's the point. And I think the relevant question that anyone who advocates intelligent design has to answer is, you want to open the science classroom up to intelligent design, you will also open it to astrology and a whole host of pseudoscientific beliefs. Is this really what you want to do in, there, in terms of in, uh, reforming science teaching? And I should point out, this was not an accidental statement. 
by Dr. B. He, he said it in his deposition. Then he said it in trial. The attorney asked him again, are you sure? Do you really mean that? And he went on and he said yes, and he thought astrology had made some very fundamental contributions to science.